Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. I'm back out in the vegetable garden today because it's time for another video vegetable garden tour. In it, I'll show you what's changed and some very cool new developments. Now before we get started, I wanted to welcome those of you who are new to my videos. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find over 300 how-to garden videos, so I hope you'll check them out. Now it is very hot outside today. It is close to 100 degrees and tomorrow and the next day are supposed to be around 103 degrees. So I'm going to try to make this short and sweet. My goal for shooting these videos has been to show you the transformation that a vegetable garden undergoes throughout the season. Now in these first three beds that you can see, there really haven't been many changes. The onions are growing in the farthest bed. They're doing great. Underneath the floating row cover that you can see there is where I'm growing beets and Swiss chard. The cover is used to keep leaf miner flies away from the plants so that they don't get those nasty leaf miners. They are doing really well and it's time for me to harvest the Swiss chard again. And then in the closest row to you, that's where I'm growing carrots and parsnips and they're doing well. I actually even pulled a couple of carrots yesterday and they're already full size, so that's pretty cool. Now you're going to start seeing some changes. You'll notice this next bed is completely empty. So that's the bed where I was growing lettuce and sorrel. And the problem is that both of those are cool season crops. They do not like the hot weather, and so they bolted to seed, and that meant I needed to pull them up, put what was left of them into the compost pile, and I'm going to replant lettuce again soon. In this next bed I'm growing rutabagas and kohlrabi and you can see that the rutabagas are huge already. Look at that. So what we do with these is we harvest them in the fall and we cook them and mash them for mashed rutabagas which is very tasty or you can cut them up and use them in soups and stews. They have a really nice flavor. And then if you look next to the rutabaga row, here is a row of kohlrabi, and you'll notice that they're heading up. So that's a pretty cool looking plant, isn't it? I always think it looks like it came from another planet. Now the bed is doing really well. I have had issues with aphids, but otherwise the plants are growing well, and I'm very pleased. Okay, here's some more changes. So in the bed closest to you is where the fava beans were growing. And we actually harvested them in two pickings over the course of a couple of weeks. And what you do is you wait until the pods are just bursting. They're not soft and cushy when you feel them and you can feel the seeds inside. And so we harvested them and we have eaten some of them and I've also frozen some for use later. And directly to the right of where the fava beans were, is this marigold that I have to point out because it is wonderful. It is called Big Duck Yellow. It's an All-America Selections winner that I grew last year and it is hands down the best large marigold I have ever grown and it is supposed to help repel pests and so that's one of the reasons it's in the garden aside from to have a little beauty. And directly on the right of where the marigolds are is just a little planting of some cabbage and it's doing just fine. Now the other bed used to be where the peas were we have harvested all of those. Now you're probably wondering what's going to happen with your empty beds. Well a couple of the beds are going to be used for growing what are called green manures or cover crops and I'll probably plant buckwheat because that's one of my favorites. So I'm going to plant them probably within a week, I'd say. It's just so darn hot right now, I hate to even plant them. And then in a couple other beds, what I'm going to do is plant another lettuce crop and some turnips and probably more carrots. This next section is what I like to refer to as tomato central because we've got quite a lot of tomato plants growing. If you see the plants in the black pots, those are three All-America Selections winners that we're testing this year. They are mostly grape and cherry tomatoes. And then directly behind it in that first bed is a row of Gilberti paste tomatoes. 
and then the next bed over is federally that's another paste tomato and there's a couple of eggplants in that bed and then the third row back there is chef's choice orange and sun gold and also a couple of eggplants I wanted to give you an update on our paste tomatoes because you might recall that in previous videos I mentioned how they looked awful and they still look a little bit bedraggled but they really are perking up and here's the interesting thing I learned we have a good friend who has an orchard and he also grows organic veggies to sell and I mentioned this problem and he said oh mine do the exact same thing they do it every year they look awful for quite a while and then they perk up so I decided okay it's not me <laughs> it's not my garden this is just how they look early in the season but I'm happy to say they are looking better this bed is actually looking a little better than this one and I do have some tomatoes here and there so fingers crossed and while we're on the subject of tomatoes I wanted to show you this chef's choice orange tomato plant because look what's all over it I am so excited this plant produces large orange beefsteak style tomatoes that are flavorful and juicy and they make the best tomato sandwich ever and that's always the highlight of my summer so if you've never tried this variety I heartily recommend it now it's a little shady here right now but look at I've got some little eggplants two there there's another one here a little hard to see and then there's two on this plant back here so ratatouille here we come now do you remember how I was having a terrible time with this Tuscan Napoli cantaloupe bed? My problem was that the soil was so cold and so wet this spring. Several of my seedlings died. I replanted them. They just sat there. Well, something happened in the last two or three weeks because whammo, you can see they have really taken off. So let me show you some of the developing melons. Okay. Here's a really nice one. Here's another right next to it. And here's one that decided to think outside the box. But these plants are really making up for lost time. And so I think I really will get some cantaloupes this season after all. In this next bed, I'm growing New England pie pumpkins. They're doing really well. And I'm astounded that one of those is so orange already. And then there's also a couple of volunteer sunflowers never hurts to draw in the pollinators and have a little beauty in the garden, right? These last two beds are covered with an arch made from cattle panels or livestock panels. And I really hope that it's going to be completely covered with vines by the time this season is over. But they have grown quite a bit since the last time you saw this. So let me show you some of the things that I'm growing. If you look on the outside here, I get out of the sunlight that is an autumn frost squash it's a winter squash that's like a butternut but it's more of a reasonable size here's a kusha squash those are typically grown in the south but i've found that they like my inland northwest garden just fine and those are fabulous winter squash and then i'm starting to get some nice little cucumbers so far I only have four cucumber plants. I know that seems crazy, but I didn't have much room to put them in. So these ones also had to be replanted early on because the cucumber seedlings did not like that wet soil this spring. So anyway, they're coming along, hoping to get plenty of cucumbers for lunches and salads in the coming weeks. Another winter squash I'm growing on this arbor is Poti Maron. This is a variety that I got from Seed Savers Exchange. And there's a few of them here and there. I think these should be really tasty, but I've never grown them before. They seem pretty productive, so that's great. You might recall that my husband, Bill, is the pepper grower in the family. He's growing all the different kinds of sweet and hot peppers in our little hoop house. And so you can see quite a lot of peppers there. I'm really very impressed with the productivity. And here's the other bed within the hoop house. Look at all of those peppers. You're probably wondering, what in the world do you do with all of them? Well, we stuff some of them. We eat some of them in salads or sandwiches. 
and we also make lots and lots of fresh garden salsa. Yum. This is our summer squash bed, and we actually just picked a bunch off of here. But these three plants in the front are Claramore zucchini. They're a light-skinned one that is very tender and flavorful. And then on the back on this wire grid, I'm growing a trombone zucchini called Trombetta di Albenga, and it has really goofy long fruits that taste like artichoke hearts. Yum. Here's two more empty raised beds. In the bed on the left, we were growing onions, and I don't know if you knew this, but when onions are done growing for the season, their stalks fall over, and that's what had happened with that onion crop. So we pulled them all up, we laid them on top of the bed for a few days to dry, and then we moved them inside a shed so that they could finish drying because you really want them to be papery dry before you move them into long-term storage. And then in the bed on the right, that's where the garlic and shallots were. And they also were done growing, so we've pulled them up and they are also drying in a shed. Oh man, it's hot. I better pick up the pace here. So this is where we have our famous pole bean arbor, which everybody loves. We love it too. But I wanted to point out that in half of one of the beds, I have celery growing, which is doing really well. And if you think, why would you grow celery when you can just buy it at the store? Well, see if this scenario rings a bell. You buy a bunch of celery at the grocery store. You use a couple for tuna sandwiches or something. You put it in the vegetable drawer of your refrigerator and you promptly forget about it. It turns to mush and you've wasted a whole bunch of celery. Well, in this case, all I do is I harvest a stalk at a time, or two or three, use what I need, the plants keep growing, I come out, take a couple more stalks off, and it works great. And also, in the fall, when I know that we're going to get a killing frost, I'll harvest the rest of the stalks, chop them up, and freeze them. So, it really is a great plant to grow, very easy, and I heartily recommend growing them. The variety is Tango. I also have more of these big duck yellow marigolds on either end, again for beauty and pest control. And I also have some basil plants here. On the south side of the arbor, I have a whole bunch of leeks that I'm growing. And I've been moving the soil around their bases to blanch or keep the bases white. So that's an important thing to do. There's also a bit of a row of onions in here. And then in grow bags and pots, we have potatoes. And when they started blooming, we took a few new potatoes to enjoy. Here's the inside of our pole bean arbor. You can see that the beans hang down on the inside, making it easy to pick. And on a hot day like this, because I need to pick them after I'm done with this video, I get to be inside in the shade while I'm picking. So that is a blessing, let me tell you. Here's one of our two corn beds. We're growing sweetness by color, and I'm happy to say that we have just started harvesting them. If you've never had homegrown, freshly harvested corn, you absolutely must try it for next year because it is amazing. In this covered bed, I'm growing broccoli, turnips, radishes, and a few onions. I've already harvested the main head of broccoli from all of the plants, and you always want to harvest them while the heads are nice and tight. And then what's going to happen once that main head has been removed, is you're going to get a bunch of smaller secondary heads coming up on the sides, and then you'll harvest those. So you get at least two harvests from them. I've picked almost all of the turnips, and we discovered that mashed turnips are darn tasty. Now, if you're new to my videos and you're wondering why there's some type of netting over the planting, that is actually bridal veil netting or tulle and I use it as a physical barrier to keep damaging insects away from the plants. Now, broccoli is a member of the cabbage family, and as such, it is very susceptible to insect damage from aphids, they are awful this year, and from either cabbage worms, 
cabbage loopers, or the caterpillars of diamondback moths, depending upon what area of the country you live in. So having a little physical barrier over the plants for the entire season, because they don't need to be pollinated, works beautifully. In this last bed, I'm growing two types of melons, Ha Ogan Honeydew and Lambkin Cranshaw. And this bed did not have any problems like the cantaloupe bed. These little plants hit the ground running and they have done beautifully. So let me show you what the melons look like. Here's one of the Ha Ogan Honeydews. That looks pretty nice, doesn't it? And here's a Lambkin. I am so looking forward to eating sweet, succulent, homegrown melons. Okay, it's time for me to wrap this up because I want to pick the beans and get back indoors where it's cool. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Happy gardening. Whew.